Hello, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Thank you again for hitting that play button for another episode of the Hetty Coleman podcast where I love to have going conversations with fabulous people. And so today I have the one and only Mel Willis on the phone with me because uh, typically I like to try to get people to go through America, sit down and have a face to face. But no, ladies and gentlemen, not right now, because things are a little crazy in the world if you did not know that. And so I am reaching out to people on Skype and phone call and just being super creative uh, because I want to continue to have these conversations with folks because it's what drives me. It's my oxygen. I love to do this and try to get uh, uh, people's stories out there to the world because I believe that uh, people uh, learn from our stories. They're inspired by them and they connect with us through this. And so... Hello, Mel. How are you doing today? Hey, Hetty. Uh, I am doing just fine. You Good. know, it's been how many weeks? Two, uh, a little over two weeks since we've all been quarantined. Yeah, all right. yeah, yeah. We're going on the third week. Yeah, yeah. hanging in there. <laughs> so how much? Uh, first, let's just do this. Go ahead and tell us. You know, I like to say 120 seconds. It'd be longer than 120 seconds, but kind of just give everybody your story, who you are. Okay. Um. So, uh, my name is Mel. I grew up in Kansas City, Missouri, and I moved to Oklahoma um, when I was about 12 years old. So, I've lived probably the majority of my life here in Oklahoma City, or the Oklahoma City area. Um, I'm an architectural photographer, and um, I am currently the host of Creative Mornings Oklahoma City, and... Uh, I feel like, like I feel like I do things here and there all over the place, but those are probably the two the two main things that people might know me from. Cool. Now, do you still go back to uh, Kansas City? In it? Oh yeah, my yeah, a lot of my family still lives there. My dad still lives there. Uh, we try to spend either Thanksgiving or Christmas there once a year, just so we can spend the holidays with the family and get to see everybody. It's uh, we try to tend uh we try to like go to the one where the majority of the family gets together so we can see as many people as possible in one trip but yeah we go up we go up there quite a bit kansas city oklahoma city what what's the big difference like if you were to say hey this is the main things different about the two cities oh well so i don't know since i grew up in kansas city it's changed a lot since i was 12 um it's drastically different than it was when I was living there. So I don't know if I can really speak to that okay. a bunch. Okay, I can yeah. tell you that um, I, I'm i sure that their creative community is very strong there, but without living there, it's hard for me to, to say that. But I feel like the creative community in Oklahoma City is like unbelievably strong, and I think part of that might be because we're a smaller okay. city, so everybody kind of knows everybody. Yeah. I don't know if that's yeah. the case. I'm sure that they have a strong creative community but i feel like ours might be stronger <laughs> <laughs> everybody probably has that kind of feel yeah. sometimes like ours is definitely stronger than yeah. that and then you play such an intricate part in uh the creative space right now in oklahoma city with creative mornings right uh how do you feel just kind of jumping into that how, how do you see uh creative mornings really helping cultivate uh the creative space well, I think the cool thing about it is I've, I've been a part of other um, creative organizations and they've all been fantastic. Like I was on the board of directors for AIGA, which is um, graphic artists. And um, I've been on some other, uh, been in some other groups. But the cool thing about Creative Mornings that's different from those other groups is those groups tend to cater towards like the graphic artists would be only graphic artists. Yeah. Um, architecture ones would be only for architects. Uh, creative Mornings it's for everybody that's in any kind of creative field. And when I say creative field, a lot of people think like painters, artists, yeah. and it's not only those types of creatives, there's creativity in just about every field. So you have people from all walks of life coming together to meet every month. And um, it's just really cool to find out things about different um, you know, industries that you never would have found out otherwise by staying in your own little bubble. For sure. Yeah, because I'm not a painter or any of that stuff. And uh, I'm at Creative Mornings as often as I can and, and yep. kind of have been <laughs> a part of it since the, uh, well, I have been part yep. of it since the beginning. And so, uh, but I like to be in the mix of people. I think everyone should be approaching life 
uh, in a creative respect in some way, right? Uh, I always Absolutely. give the example like moms are super creative whenever they run out of food and they need to fix that meal in the kitchen. You can't get any more <laughs> yeah. creative than that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what, now, when it was the first time, like Creative Mornings is a global uh, event, mm -hmm. right? It's all over the world. When was your yeah. first uh, time hearing about Creative Mornings? So I actually, um, I, ha I don't remember which chapter had their talk, um, but they had the CEO of MailChimp um speak at theirs and i wish i could remember which chapter it was uh but that talk went viral and i listened to that talk and i made just about everybody in my office listen to that talk when i still worked in an office um and that was the first uh first taste of creative mornings i had had so when i learned that it was coming to oklahoma city because hannah hannah started the oklahoma city chapter or brought it here um i was really excited so i went to i i mean i started going to the very first one and um then I started volunteering and um, Hannah and I worked together on some stuff. And of course she uh, passed the chapter on and I happened to be there and it worked out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what are some things that uh, like, so creative morning is an event that needs to be put together every month. And, you know, and I've had mm -hmm. you and Andrea, one of the former co-hosts mm -hmm. on uh, my podcast before, but let's just yep. kind of revisit that. Like what are some right things that you have to be consistent in in order to put together such an event every month? Like what are some things you like, we got to do this consistently every month to mm -hmm. make that thing happen. What are some of those things? Well, our chapter, I, I know some other chapters do this as well. Our chapter uh, changes venues uh, every month, which, can be challenging, but it's also, I think, really rewarding to show uh, different businesses throughout the city. I think it's good for them to get uh, their spaces seen and uh, uh, network with them and not necessarily be in the same place all the time. I'm not saying that we won't ever move to that scenario. If we grow to be, you know, 500 people every month, that's going to be yeah. really challenging to find a space big enough for that. But um, that, I think, is one of the biggest moving pieces is always being on top of contacting venues months out in advance so we can go ahead and get our name on their calendar um and then beth has been handling breakfast and coffee which is its own yeah uh, beast. yeah uh -huh. yeah <laughs> She's been really helpful with that those are probably the two things that it's like these absolutely have to get done no matter what yeah so we always try to um take care of those first and then everything else kind of falls on the place for the most part which one is harder to get speakers or venues? Oh, venues. Everybody yeah. wants to speak. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? No problem with speakers. So everybody is willing to kind of throw their uh, name in the hat uh, to come and speak. Do you, how do y'all oh, go? Have, yeah, we, go, go ahead. ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say we get contacted quite often where people are just like, I would love to speak. Um, just keep me in mind. So yeah, we get that quite a bit. And what are y'all looking for when it comes to speakers? So what we, um, since it's a global chapter, we all, every, or a global um, organization, sorry, uh, every chapter throughout the world speaks on the same topic every month. So we actually, we look at the topic to decide on who we think should be the speaker rather than the other way around. So we can't really, when somebody says they want to speak, we can't just really be like, okay, well, you're going to speak next month because the topic might not relate to mm -hmm. them in yeah. any way. So we look at that topic before we, and then we throw out, we kind of brainstorm, throw out some ideas. Um, and then we just, we start talking to people. So we definitely pick top or we go off of the topic first. Yeah. Okay. Topic. And yeah. then you kind of decide based on who's thrown their uh, name in the hat or people that you just, you just may reach out to somebody who you think fits that topic best. And then just yes, see if they're absolutely. willing to speak. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Who, we usually uh, just try to find. We try to find somebody who fits the topic best, and somebody that we know um, has had some type of public speaking um, in the past, oh, just okay. so we can get. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's not necessarily always that way. Um, we prefer somebody who we know is going to be a good public speaker. Somebody who's um, like I'm not a very good public speaker. I would never want to speak at creative mornings, <laughs> but, um, sure you would. Sure. Why not? <laughs> well, we'll see. Someday yeah. it might happen. Someday, Someday I might uh -huh. be better at my, my public speaking skills. I have no idea, but I guess I can't say never. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. That's cool that you all are. I, I didn't know that, that y'all are kind of intentional about 
if those people have had some type of experience speaking or not. Mm -hmm. And so, which is understandable because if you don't have any experience and you get up there and if you don't put in the work to be able to get through a, cause 20 minutes, 20, right. to 20 minutes is, is probably about the length of it. Yeah. Uh, 20. Mm -hmm. That's, that's quite a bit of time to talk, you know, if, right. if you oh, never, yeah. <laughs> if you've yeah. never done it before. And so, uh, that's cool that you all are, are looking for those, uh, types of things. Um, who, who has been some of your favorite speakers? Are, are you scared to say that since you're the host of it? Uh, would you um, would you be willing to say that? And what stood out to you about those speakers? Oh, okay. Hold on. Let me think. There have been a couple ones where I'm like, this is the best one I've ever been yes, to. Uh -huh. um, I think Ben Knuckles was a really good one at Plenty Mercantile. It was oh, yeah. two, two years ago. Probably. Uh -huh. I, don't, I don't remember how long ago it was. Um, I thought that his was really good. And... Um, was it the uh, uh, was it the emotional side of it? Like, what was it? Was it just kind of how passionate yeah, and was, and raw was he was? Just, I think it was the fact that he was raw and was just really. I think the ones where they speak from their heart are probably my favorite ones. Um. So his, I I really enjoyed his because I I felt what he was saying just because he was speaking from his heart. Yeah. Um, and then I also think uh, James Cooper was probably my favorite one that we've had so far. And it was funny because whenever I was talking to him about speaking, I said, you know, if you want to use like a PowerPoint presentation, just let me know about a week in advance so we can merge the presentations together. And he said, no, I'm not going to use a PowerPoint presentation. Well, I didn't realize that he hadn't really prepared us like a talk until he got there. And he just totally like did it off the top. And like, I think his talk was probably one that like everybody connected with everybody in the room. I felt like connected with what he was saying. And I thought it was, it was a really good one. That's cool. I think I, 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 were you at that one? No, I was about I to say, I don't remember who is James Cooper. Who, what does he do? Uh, he's a council person here in Oklahoma city. Oh, was he the last one or the one before the last one? He was, um, the last in-person one that we okay. had because okay. we had to flip over to yes. this digital version. Yeah. But yeah uh -huh. His was really good. Yeah. yeah. How did the digital uh, version, uh, how did that work for you? Yeah, it worked pretty well. I think we're all still navigating through, uh, we used Zoom for that one. We're still trying to figure out like how I can pass off the, um, the screen to somebody else to use their PowerPoint presentation. So that was a little, we fumbled a little bit there, but I think for the most part it was good. I think people were just happy to like, still be able to connect with people. And I think that's what it's really all about anyway. Yeah, no, so. that's, that's so true. How many people were on the zoom call? I want to say, um, I want to say it was close to 50. Oh, wow. Which that's I cool. Think is pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Did you take a gallery, uh, snapshot? You know, I totally <coughs> forgot to do that. And oh. Suze mentioned that at the end, she texted me and was like, we forgot to take a picture. Oh my goodness. So. Yeah. That but next time we'll have to. Yeah. 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 How many people were on the call this morning? Cause you were sitting in on uh, a talk mm -hmm. today for the exchange, which is a thing that mm -hmm. goes on in the Oklahoma city area. Not so much creatives, but entrepreneurs, business people, leaders. Mm -hmm. uh, how many people were in the, on that call today? Do you know? You know, I don't know off the top of my head. I had it in presentation view because she was going through slides. Oh, so okay. I didn't have it in gallery yeah, view, yeah, but I would yeah. say pro I, maybe 20 ish, okay. yeah. give or take. Yeah. Yeah. yeah cool. Yeah. That's this good. morning, Kathleen, uh, was the, uh, was the, um, mm. speaker. And so what yeah. were some takeaways from that? Kathleen, Say that again. Well, Kathleen's last, I, I, I'm drawing a blank on Kathleen's last name. Shannon. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, what did I can't think of her name? <laughs> Kathleen Shannon, uh, she's the co-host of Being a Boss podcast and uh, brand creative. Is her and her sister own that agency marketing? Uh, um, marketing? What do they they do? Marketing and um, uh, branding. Branding, marketing, they, branding agency. They do a lot of branding, yeah. Yeah. What were some things that took you took away from that? You know, um, she had talked about. So the entire talk was about. Um, putting your own, putting yourself into what you do for a business. Um, so like letting your personality shine through and she gave us some actionable steps, um, things that I hadn't done before. So things to work through to understand like what your, your company's values are, um, and how you can get like share your own personal voice through your brand. So she, she, um, 
So it does a couple things that I have not worked through yet, but I, I screenshotted them and they're on my computer. So there are some things that I'm gonna work through and try and figure out if I can um, work my voice into my brand. Come on, work that <laughs> voice. Gotta work the voice, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so talking about working the voice, let's not jump right into you having your own uh, mm -hmm. business and things like that. Like, can, can we go back to you actually working in the office at one point and yeah. how long has it now been since you, you, you worked at the office and what did you do for that company? So it's been, um, a little over a year. I left in December of, uh, 2018. So I left the last day of December right before it turned to 2019. Um, and I worked in their marketing department. So, um, I worked on, all kinds of things from in-house branding, um, like in-house, uh, you know, uh, like onboarding packets. I would help design those for people like new hires. Um, I would work on um, in-house e-blasts that would go out from uh, the CEO or our marketing department. Um, I did all kinds of like branding graphics. Uh, photography, anything that was visual is what I did, but I, I, I did a lot of outfacing ones. So I would go out and I would photograph, um, completed projects. It was an architecture firm. Sorry. I should have said that. Um, I photographed completed projects, um, so that they can use those in proposals and interviews and on the website and help them win new work. And I would design presentations for interviews. I would design proposals, all kinds of stuff. So I did just about anything that was visual branding for the company. And then I also, I got to work on some projects with the interior design group. Um, they would, you know, they would mostly do commercial spaces and they would need like a giant wall graphic. So I would get to work on some projects and design walls in oh. some textual spaces. Yeah. So that's that was cool. cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's cool. That is cool. So, so how much of this stuff, like I'm listening to you name off all of these things, right? And mm -hmm. I'm assuming now this is something, did you go to school? Did you go to college? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I went for, yeah, visual communication. Okay. And so going into a job like this, and I don't know how long you were out of school before you got this job or whatever, but there's a lot there, right? And I'm assuming that you mm -hmm. didn't learn all of that in college. So no. like coming in and having to learn some of those things, like what was your approach to being able to do that? And, and, and what did you do to, to do, to do whenever you didn't learn, know something like, how did you, did you fake it till you made it or what did you do? How did you go about learning some of this stuff? I would honestly say the majority of what I learned was probably not through college. Um, and I mean, that's just what it is because if I would have people in the company say, we need this, figure out how to do it. Okay. And it was something that I hadn't learned in college. So I would just research until my eyes bled. <laughs> um, and then like I figured out how to make it work and I just, I, you know, it would be something that we would use from then forward. Well, Mel knows how to do this now, so we can do this for future projects. And it just kind of my, I guess my skill set built that way most of the time. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, once, once they say, Hey, Mel, figure it out. Like, what was your go to? <laughs> did you go to YouTube? Did you go to magazine? Like, how did you, how did you learn it? Like, what did you do? Did you call people? Was it a mix of all of that? It was a mix of all of that. It really depended on what they were asking me to do. So um, I did not go to school for photography at all. Um, my dad gave me my first camera. It was a 35 millimeter. It was film um, when I was 17 years old. And uh, the way that I learned photography was through Flickr. Uh, they used to have, well, I'm, I'm sure they still have them, forums on there that you can, you know, talk about photography all day long. And I would just read like a sponge and just figure it out and learn it. And that's the main way I learned photography. But if I were learning something that was um, related to video, I would go to YouTube, watch some tutorials. The way I learned photography was before tutorials happened. So that was, it took me a little bit longer because I was mostly yeah. reading uh -huh. instead of videos. Um, but I mean, there's just, there's so much information out there about anything you want to learn. Yeah. It's all out there, which yeah. is really cool. I can't even imagine trying to learn this back before. I know, <laughs> I know, I know. Well, I've been sharing like, uh, on, on social media, like just, just different free trials, like Squarespace mm -hmm. has a free trial. Photoshop has yeah. a free trial because I think right now when 
in these times, there's people who's losing their jobs uh, and yeah. things like that. I'm like, learn a new skill, add value to yep. yourself, because whenever we come out of this, you know, you want to try to put yourself ahead of the curve. And like Absolutely. what you're saying right now is like you were on a job and they were asking you to do a whole bunch of things that you didn't have any clue mm -hmm. how to do. Luckily, you mm -hmm. were one of those people who would go out there and learn it because some people mm -hmm. would be like, oh, my goodness, I don't know how to do that. That's not in my job title, you know, yeah. and uh, where it's really important that you you be willing to try to get out there and learn how to do some things that you just may that yeah. may not be your thing. Right. And so well, and I think I think it's important to also like listen to what's going on inside of you. And if it's something that interests you. More than like, I mean, the reason I had no problem going out and learning those things is because I had a passion for it already. And I was like, Ooh, this is exciting. Uh -huh. This is something that like, I've been wanting to learn how to do yeah. this. So listen to what's going on inside of you. You could be like your career path that you were heading on might not necessarily be the direction that you necessarily want to go anymore. So yeah. if there's something that interests you, learn it. Yeah. So right now I, I love that. I love that. So what you're saying is like, Right now, you have a chance to maybe make that switch. You know, if you, <laughs> if you lost your job, you know, uh, not yeah. not trying to be funny or anything, but it's true. Like, there's yeah. something in you that you may have been wanting to do, so go learn it right now. Right. And there's so many ways. YouTube, I mean, I mean, they have everything on YouTube uh, that you you could uh, you can if you imagine it. It's probably on YouTube uh, that you can Absolutely. learn how to do it. And so, so you so you're on this job, and then you're now working for yourself, mm -hmm. working from home. Mm -hmm. uh, why? Like, why Why would you jump out there and just start doing your own thing? And it sounds like you were doing some stuff that you enjoyed and, 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 and loved to do. Mm -hmm. I, and I did. I Like, I enjoyed my job there for the most part. It was um, – it's something that I have honestly been daydreaming for 10-plus years, and I never really had the courage to just go out on my own and do it. Um my, one of my best friends, Sunny, also um, dabbled in photography, and we used to talk about having a photo studio together. Um, and, you know, like, I, I wanted to learn more things, I guess, before I went out on my own. And I finally got to a, part, a point in my life or in my career that I was like, I feel like I can actually like, possibly make this happen. And I don't want in 10 years for me to say, I wonder what would have happened if I yeah. tried that. I, I can always go back out and get another job if this fails. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to see what would happen. And so far, it's been pretty good. Of course, not this quarantine part. Because yeah. Because the first that really work right now. Um, but outside of that, it's been uh, better than I honestly could have imagined. Like, I never would have dreamed of it going as well that it has been. So I'm very fortunate. What? So whenever, do you remember the day you like, I'm leaving my job. Like this is my last day on the job. What was that like in leaving the door and, and all of that? Like, well, let's first, yeah. <laughs> was it weird? Like you telling your boss to the day that you had to leave to the day you walked in your door after knowing I'm all on my own. What was that like? Can you walk us through some of that? It was really surreal um so i actually worked for that architecture company that architecture firm for um just shy of 11 years what i've been there for a long time yeah i didn't um, think you were old enough to be somewhere for 11 years yeah yeah <laughs> i am <laughs> okay I am. you were there this for 11 years i'm not gonna reveal my age hey, yeah no you're I'll fine just, you're i'll tell you secretly next time <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you're fine. yeah i worked for them um i think just a month shy of 11 years. And uh, like I said, I had had this daydream for about 10 years of starting my own photography company. And I had tried just about every form of photography that's out there um, before I worked for this firm. And then they gave me a chance to do architectural photography and I just fell in love with it. And I knew that that's what I wanted to do. Um, and I had actually started planning for my own company. This is probably terrible. About a year before I left because I knew that it was something that I wanted to do. And I had told my boss at that time, I gave her probably nine months notice. Okay. So it wasn't like I just like threw it on her and we just kind of kept it to ourselves. 
I told her, this is going to be my last year here. This is something that I really want to do. But I like, if you guys need anything, I'm still available to work for you. I'm not like, I'm not leaving you guys. Um, I can still do work for you. So I still work for them. Um, she's actually no longer there, but I still do work for them. Now, are you, um, were you the only person doing your role? Currently? No, whenever you worked for them, were you the only, yeah. Were you the only yeah, person? Still, okay. Yeah. Um, I was the only person doing that. Um, so, so yeah, I still uh, photograph some of their projects for them. Um, but yeah, it was, it was weird. She actually um, got a job offer at the same time. So we both actually left the company at the same time. Um, but she's doing really well right now too. So it's been, it's been good for both of us. But yeah, leaving a, a job that you've had for 11 years and everybody, like everybody that you meet in your adult life that you have like a real you know, I mean, you see these people every single day, and then all of a sudden you don't anymore. It's it's bizarre. I, I remember, um, it, so it was New Year's Eve was my last day there, and I remember New Year's Day. I was like, "Oh my gosh, I don't have a job anymore. Uh, what am I going to do?" <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. I had been working on um, a lot of uh, the marketing side of it. So I had prepared myself pretty well. Um, I thought it was going to be like six to nine months before I, you know, had my first phone call. But within a month, I had had a firm actually based out of Kansas City that reached out to me and asked me to phone, photograph one of their projects that they had um, built here in Oklahoma City. And they liked my work so much that they asked me to come up there and do some work for them there. And it's just kind of snowballed and like taken off since then. So. Well, that is so cool. Now, you th talking about the marketing side of things and putting that together, What can you give us some examples of what that looked like that you – because you're coming out, doing your own thing. Like, what were some things that you did to help market yourself to, as an entrepreneur? I would really uh, worked heavily on my website um, so that I knew that that would be ready to go first thing or people could even, like, search me um, before I even left so that I could get things scheduled. That didn't happen. They didn't – reached out to me until after I had left. Um, it was shortly after. I had, um, I, I'm fortunate that I, I, kind of, I know how the architecture world works as far as what they need those photos for. Um, so I had uh, worked on some marketing booklets and stuff like that that I could hand out to people. You know, I'm at an event or something, and they're like, hey, do you happen to have any business cards or things like that? I had all of that printed and ready to go. Um, and I mean, I'm not going to lie, I, I'm very fortunate that I know a lot of people in the industry because I had worked there for 11 years. The architecture community in Oklahoma City is pretty small. Yeah. And, um, you know, a lot of people that used to work there work at other companies now. So I, I have connections that way. Yeah. Um, and I, I think I'm fortunate in that, that aspect. I didn't have to necessarily start with, you know, with no contacts or anything. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, the best marketing is probably uh, relationships, you know? <laughs> like, it does, it's 100%. Yeah, right yeah. Just, I mean, I could have the best website on the planet. Yeah. Word of mouth is a million times better. Yeah. For sure, for sure. Yeah, people, always. People definitely trust reviews of people that they know. Yes, more so than me going yeah. to your website. Like, and yeah. so, no, 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 cool. So, you working from home, right now there's a lot of people working from home. Mm -hmm. Uh, what would be some uh, tips for people who this is, they've been thrust into working working from home? What, do you have any tips or yeah. anything like that for people who have to work from home? Well, so it's I, I've actually since we've been in quarantine. So my husband and I were in New York City two weeks ago. Oh, I know. I um, saw the beautiful pictures. It's yeah. It's I love New York City. Um, but we were there two weeks ago on Sunday. Was that yesterday? I don't even know what day it is anymore. Um, so we have both been self quarantining since we've been home because they, you know, they said if you've recently traveled to New York City, just like stay home, which everybody's staying home right now. But at that time, they were saying like don't even go out yeah. if you've been to New York City. So we both have been working from home, and with him working here, it's kind of triggering weekend vibes. So it's harder for me to to like do my normal like routine with him here because I'm like, Oh, it feels like the weekend. Like yeah. I can just sleep in now. But yeah. typically, um, we both wake up around seven. I make sure that I watch the news and have my coffee and then I go over to the computer and, um, 
try to figure out what tasks need to be done throughout the day. Uh, it, I think it's a lot easier for me, and I was talking to another photographer about this recently, if I have hard deadlines. So my client work is a lot easier for me to work through than like my own marketing, my own uh, accounting stuff, admin stuff because I don't have hard deadlines on that. So if I have a project that's due on Friday, I know how much time I need to allocate to make sure that those photos are finished by Friday. Yeah. Um, so that makes it a little bit easier, just figuring out uh, how much time you need to complete those projects. Um, and the longer you've been doing it, I think it's easier. In the beginning, I was like, I don't know how long it's going to take me to finish this project. Yeah. Um, but now I've gotten to the point where I'm like, okay, it's going to take me, you know, um, five days to edit all of these. Um, and then I'll all have like an hour break and I always take a break and I walk my dog every single day. We walk two miles. We live um, right here in the Plaza District. Okay. In City. Yeah. And it's like the best place to walk her and she loves it so much. Um, so I always make sure that we take a break to walk her. Now, do you take that at the and same I, time every day? Like it sounds like, do you have a routine kind of or no? I have a little bit of a routine, but we don't take this walk at the same time every day. It's just kind of whenever I need a break. And I always bring, um, I always listen to a, a podcast or something whenever we're walking so I can, you know, gain new knowledge while doing something else. Which I think is, that was a tip that I heard from somebody else to start doing that. And it's been, I think it's been helpful. That's cool. 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 Um, yeah. <laughs> what, what, uh, T talking about podcasts, like what are some, what are you listening to? What are some podcasts that you have found oh, interesting that you've been um, able to watch? Some, there's some photographer podcasts out there. Um, there's, oh my goodness, what is that? Oh, I can't think of the name of them now that you put me on the spot. Oh no, you're fine. The Hedge Coleman podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I usually, honestly, I don't necessarily always listen to just one type of podcast. I'll go in and I'll say like, if I'm looking for, if I'm trying to figure out um, something photography related, I'll sometimes just like go in and search uh, lighting, photography, and just like search for a podcast and listen to that one. So it's not necessarily like the same podcast that I yeah. listen to all the time. Um, but there is a, one podcast that I do listen to uh, regularly, it has nothing to do with my business whatsoever. Uh, I love Radio Lab. I don't know if you've ever listened to that one. No. Uh uh. It's a good one. And they, they like have all kinds of, um, I mean, it's the, the subject is different from day to day, but it's, it's a really good podcast. It's super interesting. Ra Radio lab. <laughs> Radio lab. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm going to have to check that out. It's a good one. Uh, going back to the work that you do, like you're talking about lighting, uh, all these different mm -hmm. things. Like what, what are some, uh, some right things to be consistent in to take your best photos? Like when you're going in and you're taking, uh, these photos of homes or whatever the, whatever it is, what are some things that you've learned to be consistent in doing to, to, get, to do your best work? So I have um, a kit that I take with me every, to every single photo shoot, no matter what, because um, oftentimes, I mean, the scenarios change from space to space, and it's, it's impossible for one shoot to be exactly like another. Um, you could go in, you know, I could be photographing a theater one day, which I, I photographed um, like an auditorium for a high school. There's no natural light coming in because there's no windows. Photographing that would be completely different than photographing something, you know, like an office with floor to ceiling windows all the way down the wall. Um, so I bring a kit with me to every single shoot that has, uh, so I'm prepared for like every single possible. Yeah. Um, and that, that I bring lighting with me, so like studio strobes. Um, I bring uh, fabric with me to flat, you know, light that I need to uh, stop reflections on certain surfaces. Or uh, I, I bring a cleaning kit with me because uh, even if the space has been, you know, recently cleaned, there might be fingerprints somewhere or. Um, Lint on the carpet, and it's so much easier to just go ahead and take care of that on site rather than in Photoshop and take someone's phone and take it off. So, there are um, certain things that I do on every shoot to try and make it consistent, but every photo shoot is so. Yeah. It's, it's hard to. Yeah. 
you don't know till you one. show up. So do you are you learning these things because do you do a pre go look at before or do you show up and you just that's when you find out about everything? You know, sometimes I um, it, it depends on the client, really. Some clients um, are just like, hey, I've scheduled you to photograph next Friday. I hope you're available. And then some of them are like, hey, I would love to um, photograph with you sometime next month. Um, a lot, a lot, most of the ones that say this are my out of state clients. Like I have clients in Dallas, um, St. Louis, Kansas City, and they're not here. So they have not physically seen the space since it's been completed. Yeah. And they'll say, Hey, can you go out and take some scouting shots just so I can get an idea since I haven't physically been there. It's hard for me to say, we want a photo of this room without me knowing how it actually turned out. So I'll go, go out and take some scouting shots and they'll be like, yes. This is a, a good area. We we need photos of this, or uh, no, we don't. We don't need any of the break room. There's really nothing interesting in there for us to market. Or so it depends on the client. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So are you? Is it? Are you, typically your jobs one day jobs? Like you go in one day, get it done, and then I guess the the remainder of the time is maybe editing and things like that. Photoshop, spending time in Photoshop. Yeah, it depends on how many photos they need. Um, I mean, we're only we're only capable of taking so many photos in one day, and they actually take a good amount of time. I always try to allocate twenty to thirty minutes for a photo so that we can go ahead and um, make sure that the, the space is perfectly prepped um, and that everything is like aligned well. Sometimes we have to move furniture around or um, fluff pillows or stage the space with like pants and stuff. So that takes us some time. Um, so if they need, you know. 60 photos it would be like it would be a multiple day job yeah. and then uh, but most of the time that's not the case most of the time they, they need fewer than that so we most of the time can get um it completed in one day and then yes i go back i take them home i immediately put them onto my personal hard drive which is backed up in the cloud um and uh, I, I go ahead and figure out i have a i have certain like touch points with my clients and I say, like, once I complete a project, I email them and I say, um, you know, your everything went wa- well. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start editing these. Um, at this date is when I'm going to have some proofs for you. And I send them the proofs. And then um, I allow them one set of revisions. And if they need uh, additional edits, I say, okay, for the, these edits, it's going to take this many days. And then I'll have them uploaded for you. And Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. Um, <laughs> what what um what is the most challenging part of your job? Like, if you was like, man, I wish I didn't have to do this part of it. Is it the the is it a piece of the photography piece or is it the editing? Because editing is not uh, your love, is it? Or is it? Or do you enjoy that? I enjoy it. I enjoy. I honestly, I enjoy both sides of it. Um, what I'm trying, to, what I'm trying to be better about, and I'm glad that I listened. I went to the. I didn't go to, I was um, a part of the treasury thing this morning is figuring out the type of clients that I want that like, not necessarily that I want to work with, but that I mesh well with because I I'm going through like trying to figure out, I can't be everything to everyone. And there are some clients that want me to do things that are not necessarily um, where I want my business to go, like the direction I want it to go in. Yeah. So I would say that that's the hardest part for me right now is navigating. I want to help everybody. Yeah. And I can't. Yeah. Um, so trying to figure out uh, what clientele um, is for me. And um, I mean, there are other photographers here that they might work better with. Yeah. And figuring out how to say like, we we're, we're probably not the best fit, but you know, here's another photographer you might want to check out. I'm just, that's my part of right now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's tough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so, you, and you've been doing it how long now? Almost a, over a year or almost a year? On your uh, own? So it's been over a year. Over mm-hmm. a year. Yep. Uh, and so what have you found to be uh, some highlights of working for yourself that you didn't think of? Like, man, I wouldn't have never thought that working for myself, this would be a, a, one of the highlights of it. Well, I, I had anticipated this, but I think that my favorite thing is kind of making my own schedule, except for the photo shoots themselves. I, I have to work with what sunlight I have. So there's, um, 
there are some parameters there, but as far as editing, like if I want to, if Jared and I want to have a date night and we're gonna, you know, start our date at 6 p.m., but I have so much work I need to get done. I can just, I can wake up early and make sure that I get those hours in earlier in the day, or if I want to sleep in, um, I can just the other way. I can sleep in and start working at 10 and work through till seven, whatever I need it to be. I, I have some flexibility there, or we're actually, we're, um, we are in the middle of building a house, not in the middle, we're on the tail end of building a house. We're moving right now, so we've been moving things over there. Um, of course, quarantine, I'm not able to do a lot of work. So it's a good time for us to be moving stuff, but, um, you know, when things get back up, I'll have that flexibility to take a break and go move some boxes over. We're only moving, I think, six, six blocks over. We're not moving far away at all. Okay. So yeah. I can take a break and move some stuff over, or I just, I love the flexibility that I get. Yeah. Um, and I love, um, like, I think I get to, meet and connect with more people out on my own than I did for a company. Yeah. You know, whenever you work for a company, people are like, oh, well, what do you do? Okay, well, who do you work for? And then it's more about that company, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but I love that people want to know about me now. Yeah. Like I get to connect with them on a personal level rather yeah. than what do you do for that company. Yeah. That's you know? cool. Yeah, yeah. Never, never thought about that. So when you were a kid... What what did you think you would be doing today? Like, did you have asked for? <laughs> I honestly, I had no idea what I wanted to be. Um, even out throughout high school, all of my friends are like, "Oh well, you know, I'm I'm gonna go to school to be a teacher. Or I'm gonna go to school to be whatever." Um, when I was little, I thought I wanted to be a teacher. Okay. Um, but. The older I got, I just, I don't know if I can deal with that amount of kids at one time. <laughs> That's a lot. Like, there's no kids. way in the world. Yeah. Yeah. They, like, I don't, they are seriously angels. I don't understand how teachers do it. They are amazing. Yeah, teachers um, are amazing. I did not know what I wanted to do. Um, and, you know, I started... I kind of thought I wanted to do graphic design, which is why I went to school for visual communication. And that's how I ended up um, kind of doing what I was doing at this firm. And I had no idea that I wanted to be an architectural photographer until they were like, hey, we want you to go out and photograph our project. So they kind of pushed me to try this thing. And then I just fell in love with it, Yeah, which is crazy. I, I didn't even know that this profession existed when I was a kid. Wow. Well, yeah, for sure. Like I didn't know yeah. until I met you. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I did not know yeah. until I met you. So that that's cool. So one of the things I'd like to uh, jump into uh, with people is uh, talk about uh, their phones. And so on your phone, what are some of your favorite mm -hmm. apps that you currently have on your phone? What's on your home screen right now? Oh, uh, let's see. Um, my podcast app. Accessible. Now, do you, do you use the uh, the native or do you use a different app? I use the native. I use the, the app. So I have, a, I have an iPhone. Okay. I use the um, I use the, the Apple podcast. Um, Instagram, of course. I think we're all hooked on Instagram. What's your Instagram account? Um, What's your work uh, it's one? It's Mel Willis. Just M-E-L-W-I-L-L-I-S. Okay. Okay. Um, I would say like my go-tos, the ones that I click on the most are probably my email. I check my email a lot <laughs> just because I have, um, I get emails from clients at all times of day and I just kind of, it's just like a habit for me to check. Um, I have it, my Squarespace app I use a lot. Oh, your Squarespace like, for your website? Mm -hmm, yeah. Do you, do you have the Squarespace. analytic, do you do the analytic one too? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. That. What's your go-to um, analytic that you look? Do you just look at the activities? Is there one that you like to look at more than the other? Um, I like to know where people are coming from so I can oh, focus yeah, yeah. on that. Uh -huh. So, yeah. like, if they're if they're just like uh, if they're finding me from Instagram, then I, I think it's good for me to like focus my marketing towards Instagram or um, just trying to figure out where people are finding me from. Where Where have you found that people are finding you from that that don't based outside of just your your relationship uh network mm -hmm. where are some others instagram facebook twitter like what are you finding that to people honest, are finding you 
most people are actually finding me through just a Google search. Okay, um, yeah. Yeah, and uh, I, I need to be more diligent about asking them, like, what, what did you, you find? Know, how did you land on my website? Yeah, uh huh. Uh, I, I, I need to be better about finding out how they got there or um, figuring that kind of stuff out. But I think it's, I don't know, it's, the analytics are super interesting to me. Yeah. Um, I also, um, Harvest is one, and that's what I use to track all of my projects. Um, so, Harvest I can start, H. Like, a project right here from my phone. H A R V E S T. Mm-hmm. I've yeah, never heard of that. So is it a, so is it a like base camp or? Um, no, they um, they it's kind of like a project management. So I I I track my time. I can send invoices through there. People okay. can pay me through there. Okay. Um, I can save all of my invoices from like uh work, but. Like when I go to Kansas City, I can save my hotel room invoices and put it in there, and then I can invoice the okay. uh, receipts. Sorry, receipts. Yeah, yeah. 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 So that's cool. I never heard of Harvest. And then I have a lot of apps I don't use at all. That that's cool, cool, cool. So, uh, what else are you doing uh, these days? Fun since you're quarantined. What are you, what are some things that you're doing in your house uh, to have fun or Shut in. We, uh, like I, we, um, like I said, we're moving. We're currently moving. So this weekend, we went. Um, we purchased our furniture for our new house a year and a half ago. What? Um, for, yeah, on Black Friday, we got like a really good deal, a deal on furniture, um, and we've just been sitting on it. So oh, okay. we finally moved that into the bedroom, and we like we finally put our furniture together. We have a bed and a rug in there. And, um, and then on Sunday, we, we were grading, um, part of our yard because it was uneven and like we manually did this. Jared did most of it. I'm not going to lie to you, but, uh, just shoveling dirt and wheelbarrowing it. To yeah. The back of the yard. <laughs> uh-huh. So that wasn't quite as fun, but necessary. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah. did you say y'all built or did y'all find a place? Uh, we built it. Or, well, so Jared actually um, had started working on this project before we ever started dating. Um, one of his best friends is an architect, and they had worked on this together. So they started building about the same time that we started dating, um, and it's just now completed. What, did, <laughs> so they, completed. did they build it themselves? Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, we had so we had hired a crew to build it, um, and the architect was kind of uh, like he well he was on site and he didn't like the way that they were doing it. They weren't doing it to his plans. So we decided that it would be best to move forward without that crew. And there's seriously one guy like he is the handyman of all handyman. He's been building this house by himself pretty much. <laughs> With the exception of like electrical and mechanical yeah, for stuff. sure, yeah, uh huh. Have to be done, yeah. But he like this man can do anything. It's insane. Now, yeah. Jared, Jared's <laughs> not an architect, is he? He's not. He actually he started. He um, went to school for engineering for a little while, and then he moved to um, e economics. So his um, my or not his his undergrad is in economics. And then he went to grad school. Um, he went to law school. So he has like, he does consulting work. Okay. But, I don't know how to explain this to people. But he has a law degree. But he, he does have a law degree. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. But he does consulting work. I am so fascinated mm -hmm. by consultants. I, I don't, I'm like, now what do y'all do when you go? <laughs> you just tell people, like, how do you know? You never even done that. <laughs> <laughs> I have friends like I'm like I don't even feel right with it because people ask me to come in and work with them on doing certain. Things. I'm like, I yeah. just can't do it. But my friends do it and they do well. Like uh, yeah. going in and, and doing that type of work. I'm like, ah, I need to learn how to or get comfortable doing that. And so because uh, yeah. it seems like fun, so, people enjoy it. Well, the the department that he works in is primarily engineers, and they. Uh, they mostly do work for the DOD. They have a, like a utility systems out on like military bases. Okay. They go out and decide uh, or try to help 
the DOD decide whether or not they should privatize their utilities. I hope I'm saying this correctly. I'm sure yeah. he's going to want to be like, nope, you got it wrong. <laughs> he's probably listening to you outside. They're like, what is she talking yeah. about? He's outside the door. <laughs> He's getting, she's getting it all wrong. She's getting it all wrong. It's all good. We know what you do. You know, this, yeah. that's what it's all about today is what you do. What do. Yes. Yeah. Now, what is your website? How do people find you? It's just um, melwillis.com. I tried to make it as simple as possible. Um, so M-E-L-W-I-L-L-I-S.com. I'm surprised and that I domain was available. Yeah. I mean, it's not a super common name. Yeah. Mel will, I guess not. Yeah. 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 Well, All come right. on. I'm glad you got it. That's always best if you yeah, get your too. name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you got it. And again, for people who, who, who want to hire you, do, do you just do, uh, architect work or photography or do you do other kind of photography as well? Um, no, I primarily stick to architecture and engineering. Um, it's just, it's, it's what I love. Yeah. Um, and I, uh, I mean, there's more than enough work at this time that it's, it's good enough for me. Yeah, um, yeah. I do. I've also um, started doing some video work for architectural. Um, so that's that's another thing. I have not put that on my website yet. I'm kind of slowly building that so that I have a good amount to show people before I put it up there. So there's not just one video <laughs> sitting on my website. What, what is that? What um, can, What does that look like? What are they asking you for video of? Like. So it depends. Um, I, I so here is one thing that I will help architectural firms with is so whenever they they go for a project first they have to submit a proposal which is like a written proposal um, that has photos of their finished project um, how they're gonna how they're gonna take care of this um, explain to them their approach for this project and um, applicable applicable completed projects that they've done. So all of that is written. Um, and then when it comes to their interview stage, they do that in person and they usually bring up some type of presentation with them. So the, um, I try to encourage them to use video for that because the people have already seen all the photos of their projects. So why show them the same thing twice, show it to them in a different way. Um, or sometimes they'll ask me to like film their, uh, how, how their process. So I'll sometimes film them like sketching or, um, looking through their materials, like the picking materials that they would use on a project or something like that. So sometimes I will film some behind the scenes marketing things for them. Yeah. Uh, but, but that's about as far as I get the outcome. Like yeah, 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 yeah. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> well, cool. Well, Mel, I sure do appreciate you uh, taking uh, time out and letting me uh, ask you these questions. And as uh, always, I hope that people can learn from what we've, what we've talked about and, are inspired by you. You know, I am, I'm always inspired by people who've left a job and went to do their own thing. <laughs> like it's some of the yeah. craziest thing in the world to kind of generate your own income. It's a, it's a completely mm -hmm. different animal. And so it's cool to see that you've got a year under your belt and, and continue to move forward. And I know that during these times it's going to be challenging navigating yeah. uh, this new way of life, but uh, I'm sure you will pull it off and do well. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Hetty. I enjoyed this. Thank you. <laughs> well, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. And so, ladies and gentlemen, again, thank you for hitting that play button. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, as always, go win.